Stay tuned for the latest message excerpt from Impact Church. I hear the voice of God. I hear the voice of the Spirit. I hear something other than my own voice directing me, guiding me, speaking me, moving in my life. I get direct revelation from the Holy Spirit. He speaks to me about present revelation, present truth, and it says he will teach you and he'll speak to you and tell you things to come. But see, people who are cessationists say, well, we don't believe that anymore. But the Bible doesn't teach that. But they've taken their own mindset and their own doctrine and they put it on top of the scriptures and they brought a counterfeit lens over the scripture to take all the fun stuff out. But we're not that. So give me another slide. It was the year 367. It was chosen as the terminal date. This is all you can get taught this if you go to seminary. If you go to seminary, you get a great big degree in, in theology. It'd be so good. Some people call it seminary. Some people call it cemetery because it's where your spirit dies. So, but you get chosen. There's a terminal date for spiritual gifts because that was the year the canon of Scripture was made. The canon of Scripture was established by a whole bunch of men getting in a room and deciding what is Scripture and what isn't. And that's what happened. So your New Testament was decided on five criteria by a whole bunch of guys who got in a room. And they said, we believe these letters that we have, they are the Word of God. And so people decided that once the canon was established, we don't need any extra biblical revelation. And therefore, there are no more gifts of the spirit there's no manifestation of that we don't need anything now because now we have father son and holy book and that's straight up what it is so the argument is based on this verse they took this verse which is odd 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 it is but when the perfect is come then which is part will be done away with so when the perfect comes when the mature comes we can put away childish things and so they hang their hat on that which is a gross misinterpretation of it and it's an assumption say assumption it's an assumption made that it's an expression that that which is perfect refers to what they're saying is perfect is the Bible. And we love the Bible. We're so grateful for the Word of God. But it's not Father, Son, Holy Spirit, and Holy Book. It's Father, Son, Holy Spirit. And we thank God for the Word of God. We thank God for the Bible. But the Word is really capital W-O-R-D. It's Jesus is the Word. And this Word was written to show us Jesus. That's what it's inspired to do. So they decided, let's, why are you doing this, Pastor? You were doing so good. I was enjoying your sermon. I want you to know that it is strange with some people when you say you want to see healing, you want to see the power of God, you want to see signs of God. Some people think you're crazy. Here's the truth. Shh, I'll just whisper it because I don't want to be mean. They're fully off their rocker nuts. And they're not helping move ahead the kingdom of God. Just saying. That's all. Nice folks going to heaven, love them all. But there's more. Give me another slide just because I don't know where I am. That's us. We are called continuationists, which is continuationism, which is the belief that all the spiritual glyphs, including healing, tongues, miracles, are still in operation today, just as they were in the days of the early church. A continuationist believes that the spiritual gifts have continued unabated since the day of Pentecost, and these demonstrations and signs and wonders and miracles, as witnessed in the apostolic era, should be the hallmark the hallmark, the hallmark of today's church as well. What's a hallmark? Does anybody know what a hallmark is? It's a seal. It's something that establishes, it marks it out as authentic. That's really the church. The supernatural is the hallmark that this is really the dwelling place of God. And it has to be, and it really should be. Thank you, Ben. Thank you so much. But it really should be. So I don't mean to hammer on that, but, you know, Jesus wants every one of us, I mean, he really wants to use you, and he wants you to use the power tools to get the fullness of the kingdom here on earth. He's not going to do it himself. He has subjected himself to something called the church, which is the vehicle through which he's going to reveal his eternal purpose and his multifaceted wisdom to the earth. So if you've got a church that is operating without authorization, without the hallmark, it's not right. Is anybody with me, or did you all? Who's afraid there's a test on this? There is. It's called right after service. You'll walk out there. You'll be tested. Okay. Give me another slide. Thank you. Hebrews 10, 20. For he, was, he has dedicated a new and life-giving way for us to approach God. For just as the veil was torn in two, Jesus' body was torn to give us fresh access. How do you have access to God right now? Well, if I pray hard enough and I fast, I do five Holy Ghost push-ups. I'm in. No, you're in because of what Jesus did. 
Your access is assured, and if you try any other way, you're trying to go over the wall, the door. Jesus said, I am the door. There's no other access point. Jesus is the door. That's the only way you can approach. And I love it. It's not the new way. It's the new and living way. It's alive. It's alive. It's God. I mean, it's a living way. I am always in the presence of God. I always have access to God. I might think in my head, I don't feel close to God. You may think that, but you are close to God. You know why I know that? Because he said in the book, I will never leave you or forsake you. You might in your head say, I don't think God likes me right now. That's rubbish because you've never lived an unloved moment. He loves you and he's never going to change his mind about you. Jesus is the same yesterday, today, and forever. Amen. Thank you. I love that. It's a, a Dominican Republic. Oh, man. That was so good, wasn't it? Amen. It's good stuff. Amen. Praise Jesus. All right. So give me another slide just because I think I lost my notes. Acts chapter 9, Ananias. Ananias, well, you tell me. It was the apostles and it was Jesus, but nobody else. Well, Ananias wasn't an apostle. He was just a believer, minding to those business, having a little worship time, listening to some Hillsong tunes. Woo, woo, woo. And then all of a sudden, God drops in and says, hey, I need you for a second. I want you to go down to Straight Street. And you know that guy who's been killing all the Christians? I want you to go. He's right now blind and he doesn't know what's going on, but I want you to go heal him, baptize him in the Holy Ghost, and then I want you to tell him, that I got a ministry for him. And Ananias going, what? And then he went down and he did it. We never saw Ananias before. We never saw him again. We saw a lot of Paul later on. But I tell you, if Ananias didn't do what he was called to do, who knows where Paul would be, right? So you know what? Every single person in front of you is an opportunity. Something special is going on because you got something living and breathing, a destiny in front of you that's worth you serving, loving, and respecting. Boom, and he acquired his sight. There, there's the answer. So look at that right there. What does that say? People other than apostles did the stuff right there even in the Bible. Give me another slide. So angelic assistance, because it says angels will ascend and descend. So folks, you have angelic assistance. I wish I had some help doing this. You have angels on assignment in your life every single day. Oh, I heard you shouldn't worship angels. I didn't tell you to worship them. I told you to put them to work. I'm not saying bow down to them. I'm just saying they're there and they're ready to serve you. Like, shouldn't you do something with that? I mean, I got this screwdriver and I got a drill. Ring, 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 ring. Or I got the screwdriver. I think I'll use the screwdriver. Ring, 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 ring. You got power tools. You got help. You got assistance. You're not working alone. You got heaven's provision to do the stuff that he's called you to do. You know, you got to activate it. But if you're going to, yeah, I don't want to get into that angel stuff. Well, the angel stuff's into you. It's a part of your package. It's a part of the benefits. That's not my word. That's, that's God's word. Right? He says, or do you think that I cannot now pray to the Father and he will provide me more than 12 legions of angels? Here's Jesus, you know. We're going to beat you up. We're going to crucify you. And he's going, you're not going to do anything to me that I don't let you do. You're not going to take my life. I'm going to lay it down. Don't you know? If I wanted to right now, I could go, boom. And there'd be 12 packs of 12,000 big fellas ready to whoop your butt. And the reason you're going to crucify me is because I'm going to lay down my life to redeem mankind. But right now, I have access to legions of angelic hosts. Only Jesus had that, not you. Are you kidding? As he is, so are you in this world. And he could have used them, but he couldn't because he had to do something that God's will required of him. And so he separated himself to that. But I want you to know, look what it says, the Father, and he will provide me. He will provide me. He will provide provide me. He will provide me. Give me another verse right here. Hebrews 1.14, the message. I just love the way the message says it. It's obvious. Listen, it's obvious that all angels are sent to help out those who are lined up to receive salvation. All angels are ready to assist you in your inheritance of God's purpose in your life. They're ready to work on your behalf to bring in the full manifestation, every bit of your salvation package. All angels are ready to serve you. And what do they want to do? They are ready. They're standing and going, you, you, that sick person, Carl, you want to heal him? What do you think? You want to heal him? Should we heal him? Should we go? I, he's blind. Want me to run up and get some eyeballs? I go get some eyeballs. Oh, too bad that person's blind. 
oh man, we could have got some eyeballs and he didn't even use us. You go, let there be eyeballs. Oh, yes. You got a kidney problem? Let there be kidney. The angel. Ascending and descending on the Son of Man. Remember uh, Robert Laird and he had that vision. He went to heaven as an eight-year-old kid and he saw this great big room and he went inside and he started opening drawers and it was eyeballs and livers and kidneys. He goes, what's all this about? And Jesus came in and he says, sadly, we're storing all kinds of unappropriated favors, unappropriated blessings, unappropriated healings because people just don't, and, and Jesus began to weep. He said, people just don't believe that we're that good. He's ready to do stuff all around your world. And you just need to activate that ladder. Get it red hot, pitter patter. Bring in heavenly favors into life.